Okay, class, welcome back. In this unit, we're going to briefly touch on the role of the kidneys. Again, we have a whole unit dedicated to renal physiology. We'll cover more of that stuff later on in the semester. But we couldn't talk about regulation of blood pressure without talking about the kidneys because they're critically in involved in regulating blood pressure. Um, probably their biggest thing is their effect on fluid volume and blood pressure. Again, obviously, higher volume, higher blood pressure. Uh, but the kidneys can affect blood pressure by excreting that excess volume. So if we've got increased extracellular fluid volume, which can lead to higher um, increased blood volume, um, as we see through here, can eventually lead to increased urine output to kind of balance that out. It's a negative feedback loop here. And we see that in time we like maybe overhydrate, we have a greater urge potentially to urinate to keep fluid volumes balanced out. And we'll learn more about this later on. Uh, but again, you know, that's one of the mechanisms by which we balance out uh, fluid volume is through excretion, through urination. Um, it's also important to note, again, that again, our kidneys are really important for managing um, salt concentrations, fluid volumes as well. Um, so if we have higher degrees of salt, we'll have um, increased extracellular volume. Um, increased salt in extracellular space leads to increased osmolality, which stimulates thirst receptors to, to increase uh, water intake to restore normal salt concentration. Um, higher osmolality also increases ADH secretion, which also increases water reabsorption. And here's kind of an example of that. So say for dehydrated, right, you've got lower, um, you know, lower plasma water volume, um, which will increase extracellular osmolality, right? Um, which will stimulate osmoreceptors within the hypothalamus which will increase ADH secretion. ADH stands for anti-diuretic, anti-diuretic hormone. Hormone, and it's exactly as it describes. Diuretic, you know, diuresis means to kind of pass fluid through urination. Anti-diuretic, which would be the opposite of that, anti of that. So we, you know, less diuresis means we're gonna, res we're gonna hold on to more water. So increased ADH secretion will release higher plasma ADH into the circulation, which will lead to um, greater permeability of water in the distal tubules of the, of the kidneys, called collecting ducts, which will lead to higher water reabsorption um, and then less water excreted. Um, so our, our, you know, our, these different receptors in our body um, can, one, increase our drive to intake more water, and also um, increase our retention of the fluid we, we get, uh, which is um, super, super important in, in situations um, where maybe we've, we've been dehydrated or we don't have access to water, right? It's how um, urine under situations of dehydration gets hyper-concentrated because we're taking more and more water out from the kidneys um, and less water volume is being passed into the urine, into the bladder. So this is basically the mechanisms for why we see more concentrated urine on the situations of dehydration and why um, in situations where we are dehydrated, we have a higher thirst um, as well too. Um, probably the most important um, mechanism for what gets talked about or thought about the most in terms of blood pressure control is the RAS system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or the RAS system. Uh, so renin is an enzyme that is released by the kidneys here um, um, that's stimulated by a few different mechanisms, higher sympathetic stimulation, decreased pressure within the kidneys, so decreased perfusion pressure, and then decreased sodium delivery to this, which is also kind of related to the fluid and pressure. Um, essentially, what the RAS system wants to achieve um, is a normalization of blood pressure because um, we it essentially senses lower pressure, lower perfusion through the kidneys. The kidneys have a way of kind of balancing things out, and we'll kind of sh show you in, in the next slide here. Um, so basically, the way this works, uh, there is uh, a factor called uh, angiotensinogen, which is released by the liver, um, which interacts with renin, okay, which is released by the kidneys. Again, renin is released by the kidneys under situations with low perfusion to the kidneys, lower salt, right, passing through the kidneys, as well as sympathetic stimulation. Renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1, when it interacts with the 
um, the pulmonary and, and the renal endothelium. Um, it interacts with an enzyme called ACE or angiotensin um, converting enzyme. ACE converts angiotensin one to angiotensin two, right? And that's through ACE. ACE. Angiotensin two has profound effects on blood pressure. It'll increase sympathetic activity. It'll increase tubular resorption um, of, of sodium chloride and resorption. Um, uh, 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 increase potassium excretion, resorption of sodium and chloride, and water retention. Again, where sodium goes, fluid goes, so we're gonna hold on to more volume. Um, we'll also see vasoconstriction. Angiotensin II is a potent, 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 potent um, vasoconstrictor. We'll see higher ADH secretion, which will also, again, like we just talked about, hold on to more water, and then a higher aldosterone secretion, which will also affect fluid retention. So um, that is basically how the RAS system operates. Again, low perfusion, right, which makes sense. So say, for example, we have that saber-toothed tiger, right, that rips our arm off, we lose a bunch of blood volume. We lose blood volume, we have low perfusion through the kidneys, right? So we want to be able to preserve, right, the volume that we have. Right, so we're gonna again. Kidneys are gonna release renin. That's gonna bind to angiotensinogen, convert it to angiotensin one. We'll, we'll interact within the lungs, convert that from angiotensin one or ang one to ang two. Right, which will lead to things that will help us preserve uh, pressure. Right, to keep organ perfusion constant. Right. Um, so that is the RAS system in a nutshell. Again, understand this pathway you know, renin, interacting to angiotensinogen, converting it to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 through angiotensin converting enzyme, which is in the pulmonary and renal endothelium. And that angiotensin 2 has those profound effects on blood pressure and fluid retention, right? As we increase blood volume, increase cardiac output, which will balance out or correct arterial pressure. Um, so that's uh, the kidneys, again, um, a lot more to this. We'll touch more about renal physiology later on this semester, but could not talk about blood pressure controls without talking about the, the, the kidneys, most importantly, the RAS system.